Hey, hey, hey. First of all, welcome to all the new people that made it to this channel and community. I'm really glad to have you on board and most of you guys were actually coming from the video The Secret to Cinematic Exposure that kind of blew up and I'm also overwhelmed by the feedback that I got from it. It made me really happy. Yeah, but guess what? You weren't the only one to learn something of this video. I did too. I was partly misleading and I also feel responsible for it. So that's why I'm now making this video, an update on cinematic exposure. Once we're done with the theoretical part, we're actually gonna do a practical example together. And I'm gonna take you with me and show you how I would approach exposing a scene or a shot. To begin with, I was using the wrong vocabulary at some point like overexposure or overexposed what i actually meant was clipped or hot spots in in the frame so you gotta differentiate between what's hot and clipped or what's an actual overexposure like if an entire image is overexposed that's overexposure on the other hand i also called some work as bad and I already took it back, but I'm here to tell you again. I'm also pretty sure these DPs knew exactly what they were doing and it's been a choice. Some conversations went actually pretty wild, especially if they didn't even watch the entire video. So that's also a thing, but whatever. I could also really see everyone's perspective on this and I also got to really experience the controversial part and the art of filmmaking and how subjective it is. And you'll always learn, especially since technology is constantly changing and improving. And I'm also probably not gonna make a video like this anytime soon, because how, I don't know. I just, it's, it wasn't easy and then, yeah. So now let's talk what I got wrong. So the first thing is why I don't recommend ETTR anymore to you guys. I'm actually gonna quote James at this point. I think he commented this quite nicely. If you do ETTR for every shot, you will end up exposing your talent at different values, which will cause problems when you cut your shots together and try to match them in the grade. Any digital sensor or film negative will shift colors slightly when filming the same thing at different exposures. This is especially noticeable on skin tone. The human eye and brain are programmed to pick up even the most subtle shift and variation in skin tone. Instead, you should aim to shoot your talent at the correct exposure value, 18% middle gray, and then adjust the rest of the frame to match. I don't think I could have said it better in, in such a short time also. So now you already got these insights from James that it is actually a dangerous and sometimes painful thing to do because it works against you. That's also something that I noticed in my videos. I was already having a camera that wasn't working with me, so I had to make it somehow work. And that's what I used ETTR, but I'm not gonna recommend this to you since it's probably only causes problems and if you want to learn exposure and if you want to truly master it I agree with James. So the other thing that changed was to not expose to the brightest part of the image anymore. Well while this wasn't quite wrong it wasn't also quite right. Yeah I know I was teaching you guys this but hear me out. Exposing to the brightest part of the image was an observation of mine and it wasn't quite wrong at all especially with these modern trends and digital cameras that's always something that i observed but and now this is the important part your main focus should be actually skin tones and what i mean by that is you can still expose to the brightest part of the image but then you have to make sure that nothing else is underexposed especially your skin tones your skin tones should always be within middle gray and translate it to your camera that's gonna be within a certain IRE range. And I cannot actually tell you what IRE range this should be in. Obviously there are different skin tones and I'm not gonna talk about this too much today, but this range is actually different from camera to camera, from 
your log curve. If you want to learn more about 18% middle gray, I can actually recommend this video by Filmmaker IQ. So your, your skin tone should always fall within that 18% middle gray range. And we're obviously not talking silhouettes because that's an exception. But what if you have a shot and there is no face in it and you still want consistent exposure from time to time? Then you can actually use a gray card and expose to it. Or if you don't have one, then this cheat code is actually gonna help you out with it. Um, if you don't have a gray card, you can use grass, that's around middle gray, deep blue sky, or some other examples. Basically a exposure zone guide, and I think everyone should know this, especially if you're trying to get serious about exposure and cinematography and photography, but mainly cinematography. Now, when exposing a shot, we start with skin tone. Having my grandpa's skin on middle gray is proper exposure. Do I like what I see? Not really. I don't like that the window is so hot behind him. So now there are many ways to solve this problem. I'd start with closing the shears. It's still too hot obviously, but it helps. Then we could ND down the window, but that's not what we're gonna do today, since I don't have that. Instead, we're stopping down our camera's exposure a bit, close the aperture, or use an ND filter. Now we are basically exposed to the window, and our skin tone isn't actually on 18% middle gray anymore. How do we adjust it? We need to fill light back into his face. I'm gonna do this by adding a light. Now, when compensating exposure like this, it should never be drastic. This gets important for consistency. So if you have extreme highlights in your shot, like a practical, it's still gonna be way too hot and you'll need to dim them or remove them entirely from your shot, which can sometimes mean you got a reframe. In this case, it wasn't too bright outside, so I didn't need to ND the window or bounce some light for room tone into the ceiling. You might also need to change the camera's angle or position of your subject to avoid high contrast scenarios depending on your camera's dynamic range of course or if you find yourself in a run and gun maybe documentary kind of situation. I hope this cleared things up. I definitely wanted to update you guys on this in case you weren't reading the discussion we were having in the comment section. Yeah, that's all. I appreciate you guys and I really hope to see you in the next one. Bye. Feel free to watch another one. <laughs> Bye.